Hi ladies and gentlemen, this is Game of Trades and this is going to be a technical analysis of the S&P 500, mainly a fundamental analysis. I'm going to address a question I have seen repeatedly in the comment section and that is the manipulation of the stock market by the Federal Reserve. I'm seeing the same questions over and over again. Will this trillion dollar stimulus package that we saw here at the bottom, will it boost the stock market to all-time highs, similar to what we saw in 2018? And I think a lot of people are starting to get worried with the scope of this rally. I think we're almost at 30% rally from the bottom. I think many people are starting to give up on the bearish scenario. I've also been reading comments about the unlimited quantitative easing announced by the Fed, and people are speculating that it may stop the stock market from seeing lower lows. Now recently I've tried to stay away from that topic in my recent videos but yesterday I put out a community post and there was an overwhelming demand for me to cover this particular topic so I'm going to try and address it as best I can and really give you guys my vision of what's going on with the Fed, how it's manipulating the stock market and whether I've changed my mind about this being a bull trap and us seeing lower lows, at least retesting these lows in the near future. Don't hesitate to like if you enjoyed the video. It did take some time to prepare because it is quite a sensitive subject and a lot of people are feeling very strongly about this topic, at least in the comment section from what I've seen. So I'm going to organize the videos in three parts. I'm going to start by covering three economic scenarios which we could see in the next few years. I'm going to then give you guys my opinion on which scenario I think will happen. And then I'm going to explain clearly how that's going to factor into my trading and how I've already been factoring this into my trading so far. So the way I see the present situation with the economic shutdown and with the Federal Reserve, I see this as two forces fighting each other. I see the Federal Reserve pushing the market to the upside. And we'll call this a constant force. We'll call this the stimulus package and the unlimited quantitative easing. That's about as much as they can do. And the second force I see is the economic shutdown we've seen over the past few weeks. And that could last much longer. In this arrow, you can also factor in the technical damage that has been done to the charts, which will likely add selling pressure to the downside and also the end of an 11 year bull market that was long overdue for a significant correction. Now, as I said, I see three potential scenarios happening with these two arrows, with these two forces. So the first one would be that the economic impact is much lower than expected. That would be the situation where the economy gets running again with little to no damage. People who lost their jobs right now immediately get back to work in the next few months when the shutdown is over and businesses start to pick up again. And that would mean that the stimulus package is way too intensive, way too intensive for the economic impact that we would actually have gotten. And so in that scenario, you could potentially see all time highs fairly quickly. We'll see likely a period of consolidation and then start an uptrend similar to what we saw in 2018 here. We'll see all-time highs in a few weeks or a few months. It would also likely mean we'd see huge amounts of inflation. It would have meant that the trillions of dollars injected into the economy was for little to no reason. And so I think that's a concept that many people on this channel understand. If you increase the amount of money into the economy, you're essentially increasing the price of everything in that economy. Now, the second scenario would be that the economic impact is much, much greater than expected and that we see a scenario similar to the Great Depression. And that's something that many people are considering, seeing the tremendous loss of jobs, seeing the numbers of businesses being shut down just in the first few weeks. And who knows how long this will last. And in that scenario, the Fed cannot save the economy. And that is something I really believe in. And so if the economic machine is too badly injured, 
then you're likely to see a very long period of economic stagnation, similar again to what we saw in 1929. And in this scenario, I think we'll likely see a period of deflation. This is something we saw in 1929. This is something we saw in 2008. I'm going to show you the inflation rates over the past century. You can see clearly this was the 1929 crash. We went below zero. The zero line is here. So we went into deflation territory very quickly. And we stayed in deflation territory for about a decade. And this is something we saw in 2008 here again. And the simple reason for that is that when you have an economic collapse, when you have a loss of jobs, you get people getting fired, people are less able to spend their money. And so very simply, the prices of everyday things needs to decrease or else people aren't able to sell these things. So I'm going to add deflation to the scenarios we could see. So now the third scenario is that the economic impact of this situation is exactly what the Fed is countering for. They have estimated accurately what the impact will be and are doing everything they can to counter it perfectly. And I believe this is the scenario we are in. I believe that the Fed is countering the current economic collapse correctly. From the numbers that I've seen, the trillions of dollars injected into the economy, they correspond quite well to the trillions of dollars we're going to lose from the economic collapse. So I think we are in this kind of situation where the Fed is doing its best to counter correctly and to prevent a Great Depression scenario. Now, does this mean that we'll see all-time highs very soon? Does this mean that we won't see a huge period of economic instability and likely lower lows in the stock market? I don't think so. I think we will see economic instability and I'm still convinced we will retest and even see lower lows in the future. Now, why do I think this? Now, I'm going to make a small drawing here of our economy. This is our economy. This circle represents the US economy. And with the economic shutdown, we've got money going down the drain from absolutely every corner in the US economy. Every sector, every business is losing money with very little exception. And so there is money going down the drain from absolutely everywhere, trillions and trillions going down the drain. And so what the Fed is trying to do is counter those trillions of dollars of losses and inject them back into the economy. We'll make this a little bit thicker so we know that this is a huge amount of money in one single payment. Now obviously we'll have branches going down in different areas of the economy but nowhere as many branches that left the economy. So I strongly believe that the Fed is absolutely not able to put back money exactly in the areas where it left from. They're not able to do that. And so earnings will get affected over the next few months. There will be economic instability and it will take time for the economy to get back into the same place it was before. New businesses need to replace the ones that shut down. People will need to find new jobs. And so this will be a lengthy process to stabilize. And so we have to face the fact the time it will take for this, for, for us to see all-time highs, will be very, very long. And it's definitely not going to be immediate. I mean, we saw the stimulus plan here. We're, we're only two, three weeks out from there. So I think it will take months, if not years, for the stimulus plan to really get the economy back on its feet. And so I am convinced that what we are seeing right now, it's a combination of things. It's a combination of the oversold reading we got on the RSI. We were extremely oversold. And this is something I talked about right here, right before the stimulus package. I talked about this reading on the RSI. If you've been following me, you'll know that's true. And you'll know I was calling for a bounce on the S&P 500, which is exactly what happened. Now, perhaps that bounce wouldn't have been as strong if there wasn't the stimulus package, but it would have happened either way. And I think we're also seeing 
the fear of missing out from retail investors, thinking again, this is the another 2018, the Fed is going to save the market, and we're going to all-time highs again. Now, how will I be trading off of this information? Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, you'll know I don't like to speculate. I like to trade off facts. I like to trade off specific levels, specific sell signals or buy signals. And so the point of this video is not to speculate and I'm not betting my money on what I just said. The point I'm trying to make is that I believe that we are in a bear market. I believe that we are going to see increased volatility in the markets over the next few months and possibly over the next few years. And I'm going to be making my trades with that bias in mind and not thinking that we're just simply going to be saved by the Fed and go to all-time highs because I don't believe that's true. Now that's about all I wanted to cover in this video. This was a little bit different, a little bit less technical analysis, much more fundamental. I hope you guys enjoyed the content today. If you did, make sure to smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. In the meantime, good luck on your trading and see you next time.